The more things change, the more they stay the same. Unless they change too much, in which case a line has been crossed and there's hell to pay. While everyone complains constantly about samey and overplayed tropes, the moment something goes a little off the rails, all those complaints fall away in the chorus of they changed it, now it sucks. Behold the King of Fighters 12, the scion of one of the most storied lineages in the pantheon of punching. 12 games down the road, it's time for a change. Not so drastic as maximum impact, though we'll stay in 2D, thank you very much. But let's shake things up. Fighters, allow me to explain the rules of the tournament. Wait, 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 hold the phone. Hold the no longer a Mario sound phone. That was up with arcade mode. Time trial, time trials? This isn't a race, it's a fighting game. Who cares how long it takes you to win so long as you win. But no, the traditional story infused arcade mode, a series of fights, maybe some banter interspersed between rounds is out the second story window in favor of a series of five three on three bouts with time of the essence. So essential, in fact, that you can refight each bout once just to try to improve your time. I know! What the hell's that all about? Of course, your reward for your impressive time is... Achievements. And that's about it. Alright, we might be able to tolerate the weird arcade mode because it's for head-to-head -head fighting and anyone playing against the computer is antisocial and afraid of laying it on the line online. Wait, the online's crappy too? And no one plays it? Well, scrap that. Back to the arcade mode! I suppose we can make the best of- As you can see, the venue is exploding with excitement! Why life? Why are they trying to speak English? Honestly, there's a reason I'm not a Shonen Knife fan and they've hit the nail on the head. Sure, you dubbed the entire cast, but not the newscast. I'm beginning to lose faith. At least the graphics are huge and extremely pixelated. And man, does Kim look pissed. He's supposed to be a warrior of justice. The feet that destroy evil with a single kick. That just looks like he had a particularly dicey burrito and needs a caplet. Not to mention those French people indulging their gluttony behind him. Because that's exactly what this game needed, some racial stereotypes. And even then, the backgrounds look infinitely better than the characters. This may be the only fighting game where cornering your foe has the side effect of making them almost impossible to see thanks to over-enthusiastic shadow effects. This isn't a D&D game, my opponent shouldn't get stealth rolls. So, the graphics are large, not particularly good, and obfuscated by their own overzealous effects. The vocals are grating, the online is a barren wasteland of irresponsive, and the offline is a right abomination. I'd say there's a reason this game never made the impact of, say, Super Street Fighter 4 or Blaze Blue. I seem to have given closer to half a dozen. Heck, it doesn't even come with a series retrospective soundtrack. No extras, no story, no character information, nothing. Oh well, even the best series have their missteps. So here it is, the Hotel Mario of King of Fighters. The mystic quest of KOF. Walk away. Just walk away. Return to your Street Fighters and Guilty Gears and tireless countdowns to the release of Skullgirls. Or heck, just play KOF 13. That's fine too. If you think this is what you say, what we have next? Stay tuned!